Good morning, everybody. Happy Fourth of July. I hope everybody's having a wonderful and blessed day today. My morning started out, um, my daughter calling me because she's cooking her first brisket today. It's a small one. <clears throat> and so I figured I might as well just go ahead and get up and have my coffee. And I just got done rewatching a video that I posted uh, the other day called uh, Living for God Being Gay and Lonely and it's the most views I've ever gotten on a video here on YouTube and the most likes, I mean six likes, I mean that's that says something video that I posted yesterday has gotten ten and so apparently my videos are starting to get a lot more circulation now Oh, by the way, welcome to the Gilded Shepherd. My name is Roberts. I come to you this morning so early because today's the 4th of July. And uh, today would have been, and is, I guess you could still say, because we're still legally married, our eight-year wedding anniversary. Eight years ago today, give a little bit of history for those that are just coming across my channel it's on July 4th a week after well a little over a week after the Supreme Court overturned the ban on gay marriage my husband and I got married got married on the suspension bridge over the Brazos River here in Waco, Texas. And it was just me and him and my parents and my brother. But it was nice. It wasn't much. And then we took my parents out to breakfast. And that was pretty much the extent of the day. That evening, we went watch the fireworks down at McLean Stadium at Baylor. And that kind of became our tradition with us. We had done it prior to that. But you know, as I sit here, and as I indicated in my last video, how would my life be a lot different if I would have never have married him? But like I said before, and I will always say, if it wasn't for those events in my past, I would not be where I am today. There's a rhyme and there's a reason for everything in my life and how God's working. I wouldn't be able to come to you on a day like this to open up and talk <coughs> to someone that might actually need to hear something. To know that you're not alone, I guess. And that you may ask yourself, if I wouldn't have made that decision, where would my life be? See, life is, as I once heard, life is about the yeses and noes in our life. But if we would have done the noes and the yeses and the yeses and the noes, how would our lives turn out? If maybe we wouldn't have took that job that was so miserable and now that we were wowed by the money. Only to find out that we're miserable, we realize that we're not going to climb the corporate ladder, if you will, that there's no hope of promotion. You're simply there to exist to make them money 
when you're never going to make anything more and your hope for success is quickly fading away. Or maybe you're stuck in a situation that you don't know what to do about. And you knew going into it that it probably wasn't the best choice, but you did it anyway. You said yes when you should have said no. Or maybe you had a one night stand with someone and that one night stand cost you something. What if I would have said no, if I would have been in my right mind? See, loneliness makes us do strange things. Loneliness or the desire to succeed the yes that should have been a no and the no that should have been a yes was us trying to rationalize being reactive instead of active. And that's important, I think, to note on such a day like this, even in my own life, that I was reactive instead of active in my own life. I reacted because I was already in a bad situation. Divorced to a woman of 18 years. Two beautiful kids. But I found myself homeless, essentially. Forced to come back to Texas, isolated, alone, in shame, disgrace. Because up until that point, I'd done pretty good for myself, to be quite honest. I mean, don't get me wrong, I had, there was tough times, I mean, we struggled. But God always brought us through. But I found myself back in a situation that I had left many years before. It was almost identical. It was almost like time stopped. And I left when I was 20. And I came back 20 years later. Almost to the day, to be quite honest. Uh, months, I guess. But I left young and naive and ambitious, hopeful of the future. How many of you left your house with the same passions and the, the desires only to find out that what you thought never really was. Because I knew that there was more for me outside of Waco, Texas. I knew that if I stayed here, I would never be anything. Because I didn't know what I wanted to be. I had no idea. I didn't have the role models growing up in the 80s like that. Nobody ever talked to me about, hey, what do you want to do with your life? What do you aspire to be? Where do you see yourself in 10 years? So I joined the Navy. Going out and seeing the world. Absolutely loved it. I, my mind was open and blown away. Because it was more outside of the little box that I grew up in. 
And then I met my ex-wife while I was still in the Navy, and after I got out of the Navy, we were together, and ended up getting married, and had some kids. And then life started. Joined the Marine Corps. As a result of not too long after us marrying. Because I needed a way to take care of my family. How many out there, you've done what you've had to do to live? And, and it wasn't necessarily a the choice that you wanted out of life. You took what you could. You're just trying to survive. But then I found myself out of the Marine Corps and started out in a factory, making good money, worked a lot. I had great worth ethic, still do. Got laid out from that job and was laid out for a while and got another job and that sort of thing. Anything to provide for my family. Some were busts. Some I knew wasn't my calling. But then years later I accepted who I was. Came out. Then my life started to fall apart. Because I started ch chasing an idea to be part of something that, even though I knew I was gay and was gay and am gay, by the time I came out, <clears throat> My youthful vibrance was already gone. But I tried to fit into an area that wasn't me. And About a year and a half later, I found myself back in Texas. Maybe two. I couldn't make it where I was. Life forced me out. So I came back. And I regretted it. I was reminded not too long ago of why I left Texas in the first place. Why I left Waco. But by then, I had already remarried to my husband. And what a disaster that was, as I indicated in my last video a little bit. And he would go and leave me in 2020. But you know, I married someone that whenever I went through all my problems while we were married, being laid off from a company and financial hardships, that sort of thing, who wasn't ever there for me. I found myself reliving my problems again alone. See, whenever I found myself having to come back to Texas, I was alone. Whenever I made the decision to get out of Waco, that was a decision I made alone. Because subsequently, the four years that I was in the military, nobody wrote me. Back then, we didn't have cell phones. I'd be on deployment, no, no correspondence from anybody. So that gives you a little bit of a backstory of what my life was like. The, the people that I thought that loved me and were my friends 
I would soon find out didn't. My own brother, unless I came home, I never heard from him. Ever. You know, and I spent a lot of money to come back home. See I, who I thought was my best friend at the time. We'd hang out and go drink and that sort of thing. But I look back now and I, there's a point to all this. I'm going somewhere with it. That the things that you thought were that were stable, I thought it was stable in my life, never really was. I mean, granted, people grow up and things happen in life. Life moves on. But whenever you make life-changing decisions for your own good, How you find yourself alone? See, that's an interesting thought. How many of you out there made decisions that you thought was right for you or that you came out because you could no longer contain, like I did, who you are? And you find yourself alone. You find yourself essentially for proverbial or actually homeless. So then you do what you have to do to survive. So whenever I came back to Waco, my dad had spent many years in prison and I hadn't seen him to that point and <clears throat> if anything nothing had never changed in 20 years he was the same miserable person as the day I had left he was the same miserable man that I knew from my childhood he was the same miserable man that even whenever I came out to him, that never understood me because he didn't care to. And then during that time, I'd find out exactly the way my mother felt about me. See, I was never the favorite. That was the firstborn. I was never the favorite. My brother always got everything handed to him on a silver platter. He never got the whoopings I got growing up. Nothing. But I look back over my life now with it being July 4th. And how my marriage to Michael was nothing more than a, a combination of all the years previous to that. It all came to head. Only to find out that in 2020, March 21st, three days before the state of Texas went into lockdown for COVID, I'd find myself alone again. But if it wasn't for him leaving, I wouldn't have this house. It might not be much, but it's home. This furniture. See, everything I lost in my divorce from my ex-wife, because I virtually lost almost everything, to including my dignity, Michael left. But my marriage with Michael, I lost my identity. I was still trying to find my identity with my marriage to my ex-wife. 
who I was. Then I found who I was and I lost everything again. You know, lost everything and then found my identity but I lost who I was with Michael because he stri stripped me of everything inside. If it's one thing, he knew who I was. But it wouldn't be until after the fact that I would see who he was. I wouldn't know who he was until I started doing the research. Until I started putting the pieces of the puzzle together. And by then, there was so much damage done to me. That I'm just now finally being able to stand back up again. See, there was something else too that my whole life, someone in the physical took care of me. My parents, kind of. The military. My ex-wife. The military. My parents. My husband. And now it's me and my God who's taking care of me. But at the end of the day, I'm taking care of me. He's blessing me. He's teaching me. He's teaching me how to live the life that he wants me to live. When in the past, I always lived for someone else. I never knew how to take care of myself because nobody ever taught me how to take care of myself growing up I was bullied in high school you know I could go down that whole road and blame a whole bunch of people but at the end of the day I made decisions where I I said yes to where I should have said no and no to where I should have said yes but it's funny how ch ch today's July 4th and I'm coming to you with a tale of my story because somewhere in there is independence. Somewhere in there is freedom. Somewhere in there is fighting back and saying no more. Independence Day. Eight years ago today, I married my husband because we could legally. I married him because I loved him. He married me until something better came along. I would know that now, and he confirmed it whenever I confronted him about it. So you were just waiting for something better to come along, and he didn't deny it. But I kind of now see it now. God's been revealing some things to me as I've been sitting here talking to you and I understand to a certain extent and my life's not over and I still got a lot more to learn even at the age of 52 but on this day Independence Day birth of a nation <clears throat> Is there a new birth in you? Is there a new 
Is today your birthday? Is today the day where you start living for yourself or you start trying to make subtle changes in your life to undo the mistakes that you made in your past? There's one thing that I've lo I've learned about life is life is cruel. It's all about the choices that we make and we can either make the right choices or the wrong choices in life. We can either take the straight and narrow or we can take the twisty turning. We can take the road paved <clears throat> or we can take the one full of potholes. But there's a lot to be said in my life about the choices I made. I have my regrets. I made some bad decisions in my life. But that's all, that's all part of life. God has got, gotten me out of some things that... I'm like, thank you, Jesus. But one thing I can say... Is everything in my life... I've had to fight for. Literally, I've had to fight for everything. I've had to sacrifice. I've had to give up a lot... I've given up stuff that I don't even know what I gave up because I never went down that road. I could go down the road, what would my life have been like if I would have done this, this, this? That's hypotheticals. All I know is <coughs> my reality. What's your reality? Once you can identify what your reality is, ladies and gentlemen, the mistakes that you've made and why you are where you are today, then you can start making little adjustments to your life. Today, I'm going to do this differently. Today, I'm not going to take that same, same way home that I typically do. I'm going to go a different way. Today can be your Independence Day. So, with that being said, I'm going to finish up with this video. And I hope everybody has a wonderful and blessed 4th of July. Most of us will go back to work tomorrow as if life wasn't a four day weekend some of us will go back and put our nose to the grindstone and do what we have to do because that's what we do some of us will lay in bed and do absolutely nothing because we're on, you know, people are on vacation during the course of the 4th of July week but whatever it is that you're doing starting tomorrow, make today your Independence Day. Break a habit. Don't wait for New Year's. New Year's is a lost opportunity. Pick a day to stop and make that your Independence Day. Start changing your life and thinking about you. Some of you are like me, so miserable. You don't know what to do. And that's why you've stumbled upon this channel. Why you've stumbled upon this message. You make that decision. Because at the end of the day, you're the only one that can make that decision. 
you're running with a group of people that you know you shouldn't be around that are using you that they don't call or text you unless you call or text them. Maybe it's time for a new circle of friends. And the gay community is really bad about that. If you're dating someone that you know is no good for you, Casper the ghost. Cut all communications. You may say, well, that's not a very nice person. Sometimes you've got to cut, walk away, so that you could get your self or perspective again. As long as some of you are tied to the, some of the people that you are out there tied to, they're going to drag you down. It was a godsend that my husband left me. And there will be future videos on that. But y'all be blessed. Have a wonderful day. And God bless each and every one of you.